But I think what we need to do is talk a little bit more about exactly what CVST is. And so I think instead of talking about it, I'd rather illustrate it for you. So we know that blood has to go to the brain and that actually comes through the carotid artery right here. And it uh, goes up and it splits off and we won't get into the anatomy of that. But the point is, is that the blood from the body goes to the brain and supplies the neurons and the brain with oxygenated blood. After that happens, the blood then collects into this system that you see here in blue. And depending on what part of the brain we're talking about, there's different venous structures. And so these are known as sinuses because they don't have the typical musculature, albeit rudimentary, that you would see in normal veins. And so we have different types of venous structures, all of which drain blood back to a central location. And you can see that here as the blood flows back, it flows down and then back eventually to the heart. So eventually it's going to end up here in one of two internal jugular veins. Uh, we have the sigmoid sinus here, we have the occipital sinus, the transverse sinus, the straight sinus, and at the top here we have the superior sagittal sinus. So what can happen is you can get a clot that forms, and if you have a clot that forms, it's going to cause an obstruction to flow, and you will start to see enlargement and an increase in back pressure in these venous structures. And those will then cause back pressure on that part of the brain that is being drained by these veins. So let's talk about the symptoms. One of the biggest symptoms, and of course it's not very specific, is a headache. Another possible symptom is abnormal vision. Symptoms of a stroke. So this would be where one side of the body is not working as well as the other. That could happen on the face or in the limbs or even in the legs. And then finally, seizures. Now again, this is happening because there has been a thrombosis or a clot that is formed in any one of these sinuses or veins. Other important factors that you should know is that it's much more common in females than it is in males, almost a three to one ratio. It's also more common in obesity and in a younger patient. Think about this type of diagnosis. Because you're trying to find a very delicate area and you're trying to detect whether or not there is an increase in pressure in size before the thrombosis, the best way to make the diagnosis is with a MRI and something called an MRV, V standing for vein, which is in the name, CVST. So MRI, MRV, if there is concerns. That was really helpful to visualize what cerebral venous sinus thrombosis is, but does that condition cover exactly what's going on here with uh, this potential thrombosis from the Johnson Johnson vaccine? And how does this type of blood clot or thrombosis compare with what we've seen with the AstraZeneca vaccine? Those are very good questions. So if we go back to the numbers, Kyle, there have been over 6.8 million doses given here in the United States. And despite that very high number, that represents less than 5% of the total number of doses that have been given out here in the United States. And with the six cases that we're looking at here, that's about a one in a million shot at getting this complication. So one might ask, well, why are they making a big deal out of something that's just one in a million? And it boils down to the first question that you ask, how is this different? It's different in the sense that there is something more than just a thrombosis. There is low platelets. And that is a concern about how this condition would be treated, especially if more cases came up. What they are thinking here, what they are understanding is that there may be a situation where antibodies are being made against the platelets and also something called a platelet factor four which causes the platelets to drop out of circulation and at the same time activate what the platelets release, causing a prothrombotic event. For those that are in the medical field, they might recognize this as very something, something very similar to what we call heparin-induced thrombocytopenia syndrome. This is where the, even though the platelets, which are responsible for coagulation and the, the initiation of coagulation, even though they are low, 
you would think that that would cause more bleeding. In fact, it causes the opposite. Uh, it causes thrombosis not only in the venous system, but also in the arterial system. And if you do see this type of a situation, what, uh, what is important to understand from a medical care standpoint is that the use of heparin in these types of situations is actually contraindicated and could make things worse. So if you are seeing clots as a healthcare provider, especially after someone has been vaccinated with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, the reason why they wanted to discuss this and they got this out there was to make sure that not to use heparin uh, products. Now you asked about how this might be similar or different to the AstraZeneca Oxford uh, vaccination that is not approved in this country. It's not given emergency use authorization, but currently does uh, is being used in Europe where it is being investigated also for blood clots as well. In fact, there was a paper that was just recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine asking this very question and reviewing a number of cases. And they also seem to see a situation where antibodies are being formed against platelets and this platelet factor four, which is causing a prothrombotic state and also uh, low platelets as well. And again, uh, they are advocating in that paper as well as here in the United States that if we see those type of cases, as we would do in heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, not to use heparin products, but rather other anticoagulants, in addition to, by the way, um, something called IVIG or intravenous immunoglobulin. This is a, an antibody that binds these antibodies that are being made so that they cannot produce the type of negative effects. Again, this is a one in a million shot. This is a very rare side effect that they are seeing, uh, but they're seeing it both potentially in AstraZeneca in Europe and here with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine in the United States. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, what these numbers really mean. But I think the key point here is they want it to be out of an abundance of caution, even though this is six cases out of six plus million doses, they wanted to make sure that healthcare workers were understanding of this, aware of this, so that they could be looked at and they could be uh, surveyed and treat them appropriately.